our culture, in as much as it teaches us about sex, it was about how to pleasure a man. It never taught us how to find pleasure within yourself so you can be able to pleasure somebody. Okay. It never taught us or it doesn't have enough conversation about how to pleasure a woman. Good. You know, so we have, we were socialized in the performance of not in the feeling of. Oh. Speaking is being able to say, today, if I don't feel like penetrative sex, what do I feel like? Do I feel like touch? Do I feel like conversation? Do I feel like play? Do I feel like a massage? Do I feel like uh, a good meal with my partner? Do I feel so many things that bring us pleasure as opposed to just penetration? But if we don't accept these things, if we don't value these other things, then we're always going to constantly say, I'm not having sex. Yes. There's no sex in this relationship. Even when we are taught how to bring a man to orgasming, uh, because you, then you're taught if you really feel like he's going too long, you can actually shorten the period. If he comes too fast, you can elongate the period. Wait, what? True? <laughs> yes. If can. your man is a one minute, you can make it longer. Yes. And if he's a one hour, you can make it five Shorter. minutes. Yes. How important is foreplay? Oh, it's so important because without foreplay, there's not enough heating. Heat creates blood flow. Blood flow allows the erogenous zones to engorge, to swell, you know, to, um, to be up for it mm. and also sustain an orgasm longer. Um, just one thing that women need to know, just because a man is erect doesn't mean he's ready. Wait, what? Really? Erect in layman's language is if he's hard. Doesn't mean he's ready. What does that mean? A ah, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Googie. When you see me guys smile, it's because we are about to have a very beautiful conversation. So if you have maybe a minor somewhere, you might want to excuse them a minute because we are going to learn. One of the things I'm loving about rebuilding is that we can rebuild so many things. We are rebuilding our emotions. We are rebuilding our, fancies, our, our finances. And today we are going to be rebuilding our sex life because... I, I just had an off uh, conversation with the guest and we, she even said like, what's sex? What's intimacy? You know, how come there are people who say that there are certain kind of women who know how to have sex? We don't know how to have sex. What can we learn? Matters, orgasms, fantasies, desires. I am so hyped for this conversation because I'm not going to lie. Who doesn't want to make love and make like magical love? Alafu tu kuna wale wengine like maliza too. Lean behave. <laughs> and then they are just those who have never even experienced, you know, the joy that comes with this beautiful intimacy. And guys, I would not have thought of someone amazing to have this conversation than my guest today. Many of you might have maybe seen her on a couple of interviews, but I said for the higher percentage of women and also men that we have on the platform, why not learn and rebuild our sex life together? I'm about to let her introduce herself, but before that, see, you know, a girl has to pay a couple of bills here. I want to say thank you so much to our amazing partners at Maridadi Motors for coming through. Now you know Maridadi, so go import yourself a car from those incredible guys. Invest in their circle, join their driving school, take your car for cleaning, hapo sparkling, and also... Just tell them, Lina Mewatuma, please nipati any discount kidogo. There is nothing wrong with Kujiongelelea. And of course, to say thank you also to our partners at Kings Developers Limited. I'm loving that you guys are inquiring about the apartments, the homes. They have great amenities and very flexible payment plans. So walk to their offices at Prism Towers and tell them, show us the kind of apartments that you guys have affordable, medium range and also upper end. And I say there is no pressure. But it's always good to manifest and also start, you know, just start imagining yourself living in a home of your dream. There is no, by the way, there is no wrong in that. And of course, the amazing team here that gets to put this work together. Skola, Muga, Dama, Edwin, thank you guys. And of course, the entire management at LNN for making sure that we get to bring you conversations that impact your life one story at a time.
And now, without further ado, please allow me to let my guest today introduce herself. Hi, how Hi. are you? Fantastic. You how look are you? amazing. Oh, I'm flattered. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you to look amazing. Oh, I'm delighted to meet you in person. Yeah, thank you so yeah, much. I, ah, thank you for honoring this invite. It's not, it's not the conversation is not just going to benefit me as Lynn because sometimes honestly I selfishly do things for myself on the show because I want to learn, you know. I'm a curious soul, but also I know it's going to benefit a lot of people who are watching, you know, and you look amazing. Number one, I Thank love you. your outfit. Thank is you. this part of getting to figure yourself out? <laughs> is this part of rediscovering yourself? And this is just a compliment to the inner figuring of myself. I love that. Yeah. You know? But yeah. before we get started, because I know there is a lot, could you please introduce yourself? Um, hello, my name is Doreen Niramogisha. I'm a holistic sexologist and wellness coach. And I'm very happy to be with you today. Yes. Yeah. And we are looking forward into learning, you know, but let me just ask one thing. Yeah. How do you feel mm. when you talk to people yeah. about sex, intimacy, these deep conversations that for us, for a long time as Africans, we were never meant to have them in public? It's actually a privilege to be able to open up a conversation that is... Um, that is hard for some people, um, that is also misunderstood. When you talk about it, then you're misunderstood. When you don't talk about it, you are not liked for it. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to come and bridge the gap that we can actually dignify the conversation and that we can also use the conversation to take ourselves further. So it's a privilege to oh. be the one that um, takes the bravery mm -hmm. and talk about it. When I started talking about it, it wasn't easy. Yeah, everyone would be like, why do you get the confidence to talk like that? Why do you get the confidence to talk about that? And I'm like, if it matters my health, I will talk about it. Yes. Yeah. Any day, any time. Any day, any, uh, not any time. <laughs> <laughs> not like anywhere. Like <laughs> you know, like, yeah. give me a good place like this, I will talk about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. I love that, yeah. you know, but yeah. you've said if now it concerns you, you're going to talk about it. Yeah. But was it always like this? Because everything has a genesis, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, you get to a point where you didn't think you were going to do this maybe that years yeah. or how many years back. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for me, what was that moment that made you be like, first, I need to learn this. I need to figure this out. And then I need to talk to people about this. Amazing question. Yeah. yeah. Um, ideally, yes. <laughs> it started from a very um, interesting perspective. I I was in a relationship and then I got dumped. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then I think I didn't like the fact that I was left given that I had loved. The idea is that if you give somebody your heart and you love them, they don't leave you because giving your heart wasn't um, a cool thing then. Yes. Everybody would tell you, go into a relationship, take half of you. And I took all of me. Oh. Then I'm left. And I'm thinking I could be left for anything, yes. but I have to sh be sure it's not for sex, you know. I come from a background, I'm Ugandan. Yes. So I come from a background where you feel you've been taught well about sexuality and, 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 and good sex, and that you shouldn't be left for that. Mm. And you want to find out if that is not the problem. I think yes. I, would be, I, I would be okay if I'm left for money. Yes. For looks. <laughs> But not sex. <laughs> not sex. <laughs> but then you can leave me for my background. It's okay. You know, you can even mention, ah, uh, you know, your past is this and it's okay. Yeah. Not for sex. Okay. So I, I got curious. Yeah. Um, in as much as he went, I didn't ask him because also guys don't tell you the truth. I, I, I got interested in finding out. And um, given that I'm also a curious person, mm -hmm. uh, just like you, yeah. I sought the services of a sex therapist. Okay. You know, I was then 24 years. All right. Let when me. I first mm -hmm. got dumped, yeah. So I go to I, I go to a sex therapist and um, I go to her and she asks me, so Doreen, what's the problem? I'm like, I don't know if I have a problem. Investigate me and tell me if my sex is good. <laughs> That's what I want to investigate. Mm. Um, so she's 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 she, she laughed actually. She yes. she said all people who come to me already know what they want to deal with, um, and I'm like I'm just curious. I want to find out. I want to just know if my sex life is good, if my body is good for it, if if what is good called good sex is by me. Mm. You know, it's not like I was going to have sex with half hard to find out. But yes. I just wanted somebody to tell me, and I didn't want to find out from another man because I thought another man still wouldn't tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, we have uh, our sessions going. Even the very first session, I was blown. 
I didn't know that much. Because you see, our culture, in as much as it teaches us about sex, it was about how to pleasure a man. It never taught us how to find pleasure within yourself so you can be able to pleasure somebody. Okay. It never taught us or it doesn't have enough conversation about how to pleasure a woman. Good. You know, so we have, we were socialized in the performance of, not in the feeling of. Oh, hold that thought because I'm going to come back to it. But let me backtrack a bit, right? You are 24 yeah. and you are confident. Yeah. Me, a man has not dumped me yeah. because of sex. Yeah. You are so confident yeah. you had not been dumped because of sex, because of the knowledge mm. that had been instilled in you yeah. at 24. Yeah. You are Ugandan, I'm yeah. Kenyan. Yeah. So me, I'm thinking at 24, yes, I was sexually active. <laughs> but at 24, what had I been taught? Abstain, like uh, <laughs> if you have without a condom, pregnant, <laughs> right? If you do this pregnant, you at 24, yeah. what had you been taught? I just want to do a okay. Kenyan-Ugandan <laughs> comparison. <laughs> like, you know, I just want to do a Kenyan-Ugandan comparison so we can either throw some myths out of the way yeah. or say any way, Ugandan women are steps ahead, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, by 24, I do get the confidence to think that you're having good sex, mm. a good one. Mm -hmm. um, because you see, uh, for us, it's not that you're taught the act of sex, right? Because then later when I did sexology, um, is when I realized we've been taught well sexual wellness. Uh. The kudos that I was giving my community is that it's not the act of sex that they start us off with. It's the preparation of the body mentally, physically, energetically, to be ready to enjoy sex. Okay. So the ple the body is a pleasure machine and it's allowed to find pleasure in so many other ways so that by the time the sex comes around as well, it is continuing the pleasure of what do I mean? So you start your periods. I think that's where the biggest conversation starts. Mm -hmm. You start your periods. And I don't mean to say all cultures in Uganda do that, but the, the cultures that are big on it have influenced all the other cultures. Okay. So it's conversation that you'll find. If you don't find it at home, you'll find it in schools. Okay. Uh, if you don't find it in schools, you, you'll find it in the small communities that you go into. Mm -hmm. So even the cultures that are not heavy with it um, have a glimpse of it, mm -hmm. right? So you, 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 know, you know that when you, your, your periods come, you need to tell somebody. Mm -hmm. So there's freedom to go and tell somebody and then when you tell somebody they receive you with compassion and empathy and it's like they're receiving you into womanhood and they make womanhood sound so beautiful okay you know yes. so you're not just told you have a period you also told now you're a woman okay um there is the being a womanhood is this and this so womanhood is now you're going to have to learn about your vagina you learn about this period you learn when you ovulate, when it's about to come, you learn to sense it. You learn to tell what it says about your body. Your period will tell you how you eat. And if you're eating well, your period will tell how you think and how you feel. And if there's anything that is stressing you mm -hmm. based on how it comes. Yes. Meaning now there's a woman who's willing to listen to you about your period story. Mm. Oh, mommy, when I was at school, it hurt me. Then I had a backache. She would tell you now there's a hub for that. Right. Wow. Um, then when you come back, she tells she tells you. So how do your periods keep coming? Uh, you tell her, um, I I feel nauseous, and then uh, you know it comes for two days. They note a period is supposed to last these days. Um, then if you're nauseous, we could be having a hormonal imbalance. They fix that with a hub with food. Then they also tell you some foods to avoid. So you see, they're teaching you how to eat based on how your period comes mm -hmm. and what hurts your period. Mm -hmm. So you start being um, your own ally. You develop self-agency, which is what is lost in majority of the women that I find now. Yes. They do not know how to think for themselves, feel for themselves, and 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 and, and think of solutions quickly and for, themselves. for themselves. And execute for themselves. They quickly think somebody else needs to fix mm. them. You know, so then they don't know how to listen to the wisdom of their bodies. Yes. As we that conversation now gives you the wisdom of your body. You're able to tell sensations. You're able to connect to them and decode them. Okay. Right. Good. Um. So then there's that. Now there's that bit. Yes. And then you're told. Having a vagina and having these parts of the vagina makes you a divine being. Because ah. you see now, you need to protect and preserve and nurture this part because at some point you're going to create from this part, you're going to co-create with God. That messaging makes you feel like you are such an important human being for being a woman. As compared to 
you need to preserve that thing for your man. No, no, no. That's not the conversation. Wow. Yeah. It is at some point you're going to create from this place. So nurture this place, uh, you know, because now you're a divine being. I remember I still have images of how I was and where I was standing when I was told that. I literally felt like an angel, you know. Special. Special. I felt like I was wearing white clothes and hapa, I will take care of you. I will nourish you. Anything they say, I will do because you need to sparkle. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> mm. You know, you need to sparkle, you need yes. to look like an angel. So that's what I took. And so even my prevention strategies were not because I'm scared of boys. It's the way because I need to have boundaries around this. You need to measure up to this. You know, um, I, I need to understand if you're the one I'll do this with. You need to be good enough for this. Because you see, Lynn, when you take care of your body, you start feeling so good in it. And then when you're told of, if you have sex at this stage like this, you could have STIs, you could have HIV, you could get pregnant earlier, yes. and then you could be forced to abort because abortion then was not even a medical mm. story. Mm -hmm. It was you could tell your friends and then they take you to some lady, and then we knew the dangers of that. So imagine you're thinking, if I nurture my body and it's sparkling, why should I bring on all those things? So I need to be my first soldier for my womb. It's divine. It's divine. And then you start taking care of it like that. So okay. even when you choose to have sex, really it's been mindfully thought mm. about. Mm. It's not a wow of the moment. I'm not saying that all Ugandan girls, because again, we also have trauma histories that can, can affect that. Our capacity to have self-control is also affected by our different attachment woundings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but then at least that gives you power. It okay. gives you uh, the knowledge to be able to do that. So that's one of the things. Yes. Then the other bit is that also you're taught femininity. Okay. So then when you come for holidays, we have camps for girls. You're taught how to sit. You're taught how to talk. You're taught how to, to communicate. Because even the way you are talking and now I'm talking, <laughs> let me try sit. <laughs> Early, and then, um, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're, you're taught how to have um, a certain kind of like poise and grace, um, you know, so you you have certain practices, you have certain exercises, uh, you have certain things you do together as girls that actually bring that out naturally. What are some of the exercises? <laughs> <laughs> it's we learn how to do breath work earlier. Breath? Breath work. What's that? Breath work, like breathing. Being like able Yes, because for you to breathe, you need to straighten your spine. Yes. You know, then we are taught how to sit. You cannot just sit and you're like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, the pressure is too much. <laughs> no? <laughs> you know, you can't put yeah. your legs up. <laughs> <like that. laughs> <laughs> you cannot just be talking and you're like, this, like no. yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you know, some of those things like you cannot you because because then you're told and then they're using certain uh, practices like your aunties don't tell you this is going to make you a good communicator or this no 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 it is they would tell you if you sit like this food is going to choke you and it's going to go one side oh. so you see they're using a certain tactics to mm. actually make you straighten up mm -hmm. you know they tell you if you're sitting sit straight if you're drinking water if you're eating if you're talking your voice is going to be more audible if you're straight so if you want to be hard you need to be able to straighten up yes. but if you talk like this somebody is going to disrespect you yeah. so you don't look down when you're talking look straight you understand and you don't even have to look straight, just straight in your spine, you know, and become. So we, those, those small conversations yes. eventually make you feel like, you know, you love your body, you, you love to dance. And then the, the, the dances, we feel like all these, um, the traditional dances generally were geared towards making a woman flexible. Yes. You guys like dance, you know, dance. You know, the dancing and then the, <laughs> you know, the whole hip movement yes. thing and then the leg work. <laughs> Uh, you know, it just it just makes you sort of like flexible, yes. not. <laughs> <laughs> I know, guys. I know. <laughs> so then there's the food yes. now, you know. So you're taught about vaginal steaming. You're taught about herbs to to soak in. You're taught about um, how to nourish you. You see how you guys love makeup. I yes. find people here love makeup. The way you love makeup is the way we love. 
down there down there is the way we love taking care of our vaginas i would rather do a steaming for my vagina than spend time on my face period <sighs> you know uh, me i'm doing both <laughs> <laughs> which is nice no, now no, but i'm just yeah. like so they teach you now yeah, so how they, to to the herbs like, yes how to nourish your vagina so which herbs make your vagina smell good which herbs remove bad odor you know which herbs to use after your menses uh what to not do before your menses um you know which herbs to drink and which herbs to soak in wow. which ones to steam with um you know all this because you want to feel good because also when there's feeling you appreciate it when i steam my vagina or sit in herbs for my vagina my pelvic floor is lighter you know, so I move about better. I don't have um, infections yes. that make me feel tight. You know, have you ever had an infection? No. And how it was, oh, thank God you've never. You know, an infection makes you feel like you're too heavy around here and that your whole area is on fire. Yes. And you don't like yourself. Somehow women attach their their sense of worth to also how they feel down with, there. You know, with their vaginas. Yes. So if I feel like she's clean, she smells good, there's nothing, no, no irritation or nothing, there's a way I have a lightedness. Yeah. You know? And so when we go to feel that, you understand, I can feel, I can sense an infection is coming mm. by. I can sense my menses about to come and they're not coming easy this time. I can sense I'm having constipation before my menses. I could take a herb to just uh, remove all that. Um, so we are taught herbs. You just be like, sort of like, I find the herbal language is more familiarized with the Ugandan woman. Yes. That we are our first point of, of consideration. If I have something, I'll first take a herb, go to the doctor. So you guys are not like pills, uh, no. buy these, get this Panadol, I don't mm. know all these things. You are not about mm. that. I'll first take care of myself the first three days. Then if I notice symptoms are persisting, that's when I'll go to the doctor. Wow. Over the counter culture is not something that we do a lot. I find that people here, even when they have a flu, they go to the hospital. Thank God for COVID. COVID taught people how to now take back that yes. that power, yeah. um, realign themselves with herbs and 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 and, and you know food mm. and nature. That was not here. Now just imagine all those healing benefits from nature. People not used enjoying them, and only to, medication is good. But usually there's that element of agency. I need to be able to be the one to tell the doctor I feel like this. No, the doctor to investigate it. Okay. You know, hey. so those things, when you bring them together, now when you find, when you start um, tapping into your erotic desires, into your intimacy, when you find a partner, you're easy to have. It's easy for you to relate. It's easy uh. for you to have a, to, to, to have desires. Yes. It's easy for you to have a good libido. Mm. It's easy for you to not feel like you've been overworked. Mm -hmm. It's easy for you to enjoy, to own that pleasure, to take in pleasure. Then you can give as much pleasure. Okay. Then you're not a hard person to turn on. You're not a hard person to deal with. All right. Yeah. So at that age, mm. the, this is how you look like as a woman. Yeah. You already know. They are telling you this are my, uh, <laughs> I wanted to say it is like, yeah. these are my breasts, these yeah. are my hips, yeah. this is my vagina. Yeah. But you are going to come in into contact with a man right yeah, yeah. so are they teaching you mm. about mm. the men now yeah. because see, we are going to come into contact yeah. so are they teaching you about the men's side and how to stimulate yourself or stimulate or are the men also getting those lessons somewhere else so the men are also getting their lessons mm. on how to please a woman but it's a progressive conversation yes when you're younger um, they don't tell you now when you have a man or when a penis is going to come inside you. Yes, no. that's what I meant to ask, but I went around. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Yeah, thank I will you. say all the things. Thank you, things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, and no, it's not like they say that. Okay. I think, not I think, but what happens mostly is preparing you. Mm. The other important aspect I found is that also they, they prepare you to own your emotions, to understand that you're going to feel a certain way. So you don't have to to feel guilty for feeling like that mm. but that now you have power over those emotions you can control them but they're there you don't deny the fact that they're there so as the years go by about 17 18 the conversation starts you know the conversation that you're going to have um you're going to when you have a boyfriend what happens because between 14 and 16 there's 
there's straight talk now there's these other um you know like um spheres that come in to teach you about emotions about the pressure the the pressure to be able to have relationships mm. about having healthy relationships yes. uh, the importance of touch that the things that you can do together about healthy intimacy that does not involve um you know physical penetration so you're progressively taken on but mm. also now school comes mm. in to help mm. with that because personally i think straight talk did such a very good um you know job in yes. helping us learn self-control owning the emotions understanding you're going to desire you're going to need companionship you're going to need a boyfriend but there are some things you can do with a boyfriend what do you need at that moment you need touch you need regulation you need someone to talk to you need all these other things you can get without having to actually have sex with yes. a person and then they also feel good and they're okay okay and so then now we're taught how to um have self control and decide when you're going to have sex mm. right but now culturally what happens is that usually now the 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 conversation about how to have sex starts university stage okay when you're being prepared for marriage mm. or to have now a partner that's when you you will hear more of that conversation mm. so now we have senga sessions yes. away from your aunties yes. now there are these societal sengas So as girls you start having different groups and inviting these singers to teach you how to to make love to teach you how to treat a man and to teach you to continue the conversation of how to nurture yourself so you can you're desirable for a man. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can we go now to when you are 24 and yes. you got you know you yeah. got dumped, yes, right? I got dumped. So before you are 24 mm. they've taught you all these things. Yeah. You've gone to the singers. Yeah. First how are the singers like the women? How how is that like? It's actually amazing. Yeah. They have an interesting way of teaching. They use euphemism. Euphemism is they will teach you about sex without using the word sex, penis, vagina right but then they would teach you they have a beautiful language they don't teach in english they teach in in, in vernacular wow. you know and so it's like a night of laughing you learn through laughing so if you're shy the laughing creates vulnerability mm-hmm. and you're able to open up because yes. we all go in there when we are definitely shy but because they are so funny um you know they sort of like uh, that break that 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 toughness that that sh- that shame the shame that we come and with i'm not good yeah. you know the shyness and the guilt of certain things then you eventually find all of you asking questions uh-huh. and being able to be part of it so i think what i like about it also is they teach you the art of making love Yeah okay. um they 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 don't mean their words. Okay. Yeah. What are some of the things they say? <laughs> <laughs> you see now since we don't know Kiluganda eh. sasa so, so, for my people who eh. are do- Nini maybe speaks Swahili yeah. that art of making love you yeah. can just briefly tell us about it I will tell you about but I'm not mm. going to go into in depth okay. because I would prefer people to come to me mm. I I find it to be more engaging mm-hmm. on a personal basis Oh no no that, that one they come will TV. Yeah but I, like in general uh, yeah. when they are telling you how to make me my question is yeah. do they have a mannequin that's a man there Yeah oh. And yes actually they, to let me just let them come to you because i think i'll come to you personally I'll come to you personally. they come they they start without a man yes um like the fi- the first showers that sessions that i went for they come without a man mm. um then the the advanced ones like the bridal showers they come with a man it can't even be but then uh, what i liked about the first ones is that they make all of you play mm. so it's taking you through the different sex styles okay. and then talking to you about the different body b- bodies and yeah. then how to be able to connect to different uh, penis sizes and 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 then your body shapes uh-huh. you know so it's playing around with that oh. yeah and Now then i've gotten what you are saying yeah. so in short you also teach people how to do that yeah. so you are saying Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. Because uh, I was just looking for someone who can speak English and make us understand, yes, you know. Yes, so you yes. can actually teach yeah, people how yes. to do that yeah. using a real person. No. Eh, hey, a no. mannequin with us. So there's not going to be uh, vagina to vagina connections. There's no, not going to be. Yes. No, like <laughs> How <laughs> are you guys so you know <laughs> so actually you and mm-hmm. i can learn how to make love without having to without necessarily using use a man okay yeah. so people can actually do that yeah people uh-huh. and i also find it playful like when i do this at bridal shows it's like a playful way of connecting and and and, and learning a few things um and then pe- people can mentally connect dots and and practice sometimes you don't really have to be that 
um, direct mm. with, with, with teaching, especially for me, I don't do that. Okay. Because I, I like to open up people's minds mm. and sense of imagination, um, you know, as opposed to Doreen say, do this, get in this, do it like that into this i like people to also um if i say something it gets into your own information and then it becomes a diverse idea oh, yeah i love that yeah. so you are doing it also in bridal showers here yeah. in kenya yes i do our lady is shocked sometimes um so this is what happens lynn <laughs> um again this is the mold that i broke yes. i think i'll jump you now when I, I when i did my my course yes. then i went i did full sexology mm -hmm. My goal, my, 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 my driving force was I want to first teach women how to own their pleasure. I'm not going to go into what they're expecting because we are so excited to learn how to please men. Because we, we've been conditioned to perform. We've been conditioned, if I do this for him, will he take me? Will he accept me? Will he keep me? You know, and that performance really um, creates a, a, um, a gap. Because when you're performing, a person can tell you're either anxious, you're not into it. They can feel your body is not releasing. It's not gyrating. It's mm. not vibrating. It's not creating the sensations on the inside yes. that are created when a person owns the pleasure. Yes. So I'm from my experience after therapy, I got to realize this gap that we have a pleasure gap where women um, phone. I call it phoning. Like we instantly want to please to go away from the fear of being abandoned. And I felt that messaging wasn't helping us. Mm. It was helping the men. Mm. It was sort of like patriarchal, um, yes. you know, reasoning. reasoning. And I am for men feeling pleasure, but I think you can't give what you can't feel. Yes. If I don't know how to feel, I don't know what I'm giving. Yes. So I could be thinking I'm giving the best, but how do I know the best when I've never felt the best? Ooh. You know, so my goal was to, to change that conditioning, mm. to be able to teach women how to, to experience pleasure. Okay. Then they can be able to give mm. pleasure, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are taught, and it's good, at least we are taught now how to please the man. Um, even when we are teach, being taught, because these are the things, when you ask me, I can say some of them. Yes. If you're taught, when you're being taught about sex, what I liked and also what I studied and found is that you're taught about your pleasure body. And you're taught the different areas where you can orgasm from, so you can choose. That you don't necessarily have to orgasm from penetration. Mm. You, and then all these other parts are orgasmic as well. So you don't limit yourself to thinking you're less than. Yes. Because for you, you can squat, but then you can't experience vaginal penetration. Mm. Rather, you can't experience cervical orgasms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so the, 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 break, the beauty about it is that you're taught, in as much as there's a highlight on squatting, um, there's a highlight on, 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 on cervical orgasms, but also there's a highlight on the other parts of the body, a woman's body, that are erotic and that they are part of the sexual experience curve and that they bring pleasure. Mm -hmm. So if something brings you pleasure, it needs to be owned, not, not reduced to, you know, if I didn't have a cervical orgasm, I don't think I'm a good woman. Mm. Yet, actually, the nipples were pleasurable in that if you spent some more time with the nipples, you could say that was your pleasurable evening. Right? Period. Period. Yes. Own your pleasure. Yes. So if he's waiting for me to squat, yet I felt much better with my nipple stimulation. He wait for you. Yes. 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 Ladies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh -huh. You know. Yes. So I'm owning it. I don't want to be asked, ah, babe, I want you to I want you to make it wet. Make it make it rain. Make it rain. What if I want a cervical orgasm? I rained already. <laughs> You know, uh, let me uh, own uh, my pleasure. Yeah. Then you own what you enjoy from me. Mm. Hunt for your pleasure. Let me hunt for mine. You know, and and, and I think that's the what I didn't find here. Yes, that was the gap that I also didn't find here. I find it much easier with Ugandan women. Fast me, I come fast. You know, a Ugandan woman will have to be able because even when we are taught how to bring a man to orgasming uh, because you, then you're told if you really feel like he's going too long you can actually shorten the period if he comes too fast you can elongate the period wait what true <laughs> yes if can. your man is a one minute you can make it longer yes. and if he's a one hour you can make it five Shorter. minutes yes <laughs> 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 
Yaani <laughs> wazazi mlitufanyia nini? Really? Yeah, so ah. you 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 basically are getting to being mindful enough to be able to read body language. Mm. When you're not mindful, uh, you're not able to. So Lena I'll tell you, I like the fact that people here love performance. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of focus on the external gratification yeah. they are not as mindful they don't have time to take care of themselves so the women here need to be able to um, create some time to tap into taking care of themselves because it's all outward mm. they will treasure makeup more than they will treasure taking a smoothie right yes. um, they will want to look the part but not feel the part Ooh, period mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's a disconnect because you will attract the man will you keep the man can attract but not keep yes good so um so the difference with that is that if you're taught how to feel to be mindful you'll be able to read a man internally and then you'll be able to guide and choose mm. because um your, your vagina is that emotional space yeah. you feel from there and you can be able to your sensations are able to communicate to you how to be able to read mm. so in that you can actually guide you know because also men know that if she moves she's guiding you the one is guiding i'm ready for this don't go here yet um i still need you around my nipples don't leave the clitoris yet don't go here yet as opposed to him going where he wants mm -hmm. without consent mm -hmm. or without considering because if both bodies are numb they're not communicating do you feel like men though consult do you feel like men even take time or they just goals as long as eh? based on the complaints i've gotten here no many are don't Eh, many are enter women as if they're entering a blind a, a, um, a, a room without lights let's talk about it <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> eh, for my kenyan women what are they, what are they telling you the, so our women, men can yes listen. the the when the women start working on being mindful be, uh, being receptive they find that men don't have time for that. In fact, they even verbalize it. We have time to look for school fees. Who has time for this? They don't have time for foreplay. Uh, so they don't have time to be able to engage a woman's full erotic um, body. Yes. They only go to one part, penetrative sex. They miss out on the other elements of pleasure or they don't take as much time there. So um, again, there's too much speed. You yes. know, you can even tell when a, a man who is Mm -hmm. Even when you're dating them, you yes. can just tell a man who is too fast. Yes. I actually move, guys. Guys, please move, guys. He's just yes. going to pick up. Yes. Done. Yes. Done. Then, chua. Going to work. Simu. Done. <laughs> Maburo. <laughs> like intimacy doesn't matter yeah. you know mm -hmm. so um there's a lot of people are, there's, there's a lot of dissatisfaction yes under nourishment mm. yeah how important is foreplay oh it's so important because without foreplay there's not enough heating you need some heat in the body yes uh to heat creates blood flow blood flow allows the erogenous zones to engorge to swell <sighs> you know to um to be up for it mm. and also sustain an orgasm longer so there's if there's not enough foreplay just imagine your vaginal lips are Somebody gets me the service, Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we got me the service for this one. <laughs> At least for the laughter, you know, it's the name. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where? Uh -huh. You know, so um, if they are men, <laughs> um, somebody gets to them. Yes. Um, ideally, you will either have premature ejaculation. Yeah. Women too get premature ejaculation. Mm. Like you come too fast. Or a man is going to get down there and he's going to want to force yes. the erecting. Mm. You know, he's going to force everything to mm. come. He's going to force you to be wet. Uh, some even put saliva, you know, to force you to be... Why are you putting saliva? Why not put in the work? What? <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> Diamond was just chilling. Why, why not put in the work? 
work. Am I not putting the work? What saliva? It's my body. Turn it on. Mm. It's, I have sensations. I have blood. Yes. You know, make the blood flow. Yes. When the blood flows, I will engorge. No, and they I'll be even ready use aremis, you know? Mm -mm. No. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. To do, do the work. No, yeah, your body is a self-lubricating machine. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't need external support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Powerful. So, uh, so foreplay is important for that, honestly, mm. uh, for the body to be ready, but also to sustain longer periods of an orgasm. The other day I was listening to a lady who said she enjoys using her toys, you know, she has her rabbit, a rabbit makes her come in two minutes. I'm like, girl, two minutes of, of, a, of an orgasmic space, you need 15 minutes. Good. Or 22. 22 to be in an orgasmic state. Your body needs that. You're saying your rabbit is giving you two. Why are you breadcrumbing yourself? Good. <laughs> hey, Doreen, we needed you like two zero zero. Yes, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. um, so without foreplay, because again, also when people um, are yeah. masturbating or using um, going into pornography, they're not really preparing their bodies mentally, physically. So it's a quick, quick kind of like situation, like you're saving somebody from 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 drowning, and or instead you are you know drowning mm -hmm. them further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's very powerful. Yeah. So. This age when you're 24, yeah. of course, you 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 fell in the hands yeah. of another amazing person, yeah. right? Yeah. And now you are aware as a woman. Yeah. So, but me, the, the point I wanted to connect is yeah. if they spent all that time teaching you mm. about sex and how to do it and everything, mm. when you are 24 and you visit a sex therapist, mm. what are some of what are some of the things that could have really helped you mm. had they also taught you earlier? <clears throat> if they had taught me earlier, um, I think what's, what the sex therapist did for me was help me discover my pleasure points further and then using a language I can understand. Because in vernacular, <clears throat> there are no questions. With a sex therapist, I can ask why. Oh. Why do I need to squat? I am at an age where I have too many whys. You know, anything which does not answer my whys is not for me. Mm. So um, there's, there's, there's no space for whys. It's, that's, the, that's, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So with a the sex therapist, you're able to discover your individuality. Uh, with the messaging in society, it's as if we are all supposed to squat. Yes. We are all supposed to have multiple orgasms. We are all supposed to have nipple orgasms. Scream. Or we are all supposed to moan a certain way. We are all supposed to say certain things. You see, it's generalized information. Yes. With sex therapy, you're taught, the different, you're taught to discover your individuality, to discover your sex personality. Mm, mm. And that does really empower you mm. because then you call in what you need. You're able to um, actualize your desires. You're able to know what your fantasies are and you have a language for them. Yes. Then you learn boundaries. Because also what I didn't learn from my lessons <clears throat> was having sexual boundaries. Um, it, and it was big for me because yeah. then from 24, I learned how to set boundaries. It became a major for me. Relationship boundaries, in everything I have boundaries because I learned how to set boundaries with my sex. Because I'm, I'm taught this is your body. You determine how you want to feel. So you verbalize what you want. If you don't say what you want, nobody's going to figure you out. Nobody has come down on this earth with a Doreen manual on what pleases Doreen. Doreen is going to have to tell somebody what pleases her. Mm -hmm. So that means Doreen is going to also do some self-investigation yes. of what really feels good. Um, some, some, some of the messaging we have is that our own bodies are taboo to us. You're taught about the nose, but you can't touch your clitoris. What's the difference? Isn't that part of your body? It is. But a divine one. You grow up knowing I cannot look at that part. I will not touch that part. So how will you know how it feels like? Let's talk about squatting you know, yeah. and other things. Yeah. Because I f f first and foremost, does sex differ from a man and a woman? In terms of? In terms enjoyment? of in enjoyment. Um, I'm still talking about the the orgasm gap mm. that is actually creating a disparity in how much women enjoy orgasms and how much men men still are beating us in orgasms hey they're enjoying their orgasms we have too many psychological blocks to reach there talk to me about that though 
Yeah. Because yeah. isn't this where faking an orgasm comes in? Like yeah. women will be acting like they had an orgasm, but mm. they did. When I was researching and ha- like on this conversation, mm. I found out that there's actually a bigger percentage of women who fake an orgasm, and it has everything to do with mm. the mind, right? Yeah. If I enter that zone, mm. you can maybe touch briefly. Mm. How is my mind and my body supposed to be? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that you go there. <laughs> Although this is deep, again, I'll encourage people to come, for, okay. come. for my events, mm. to come f- uh, to join programs yes. and debunk some things. Mm-hmm. And some of these things are ingrained in our bodies because yeah. mentally what we believe, the body keeps the score bad. Yeah. Um, we have psychological blocks that uh, also have been created culturally. They have been socialized in us. Uh, when we look at the pleasure gap, it is ideally mostly um, that one, how we understand sex. Sex is um, <clears throat> sex is uh, different from pleasure. Sex is different from sexuality. Sex is different from sexuality. Um, also, uh, when we look at the at the pleasure gap, we look at the fact that we have been socialized to think sex is penetration. Um, yes. Yeah. So, and anything else is not sex. Anything else is just foreplay. You know, uh, that's one. To to think sex is for, for procreation. Up to now, 30, I have, I think, 50% of women who are my clients still, for them, when they're done with children, they're done with sex. You know, now it is for when he feels like, but he's disturbing me a lot. Is there something you can give a man to stop having a libido? <coughs> you know, things like that. So so the, the subconscious understanding like we know sex should be for pleasure yes but because there's that subconscious wounding that is for procreation there's no further exploration for what more can i get from Mm. sex Mm. um what more can it value me Mm. why do i need to continue searching um for its pleasure or the continuation of um so mentally also we have mother wounds as women uh we have uh conditioning that affects how we look at ourselves we have we are self critics we judge ourselves harshly we hate our bodies damn we hate our bodies and when we hate our bodies what's happening in our brains is that we are not capable of leaving our headspace to go into our bodies Mm. because for you to be able Mm. to surrender into a sexual experience you need to go into your body but then if you're stuck in your brain still convincing yourself you're beautiful he's gonna keep you or he's not seeing the love handles or your ass is big enough oh my god my nose is not too big for him today is he seeing the the lipstick on my lips Mm. it's you know we've been conditioned to look at the surface beauty of a woman we ourselves do not know how to call in our inner beauty Mm. you know and that's why we are even shaming ourselves Oh, she's too big, she's too small. Her makeup is not good, her lashes are not good. Her nose is this, her lips is good. Mm. We are still looking at external standards yes. of beauty and those are still defeating us. Yeah. They, they stay in our heads because guess what? We also know men are visual. Yeah, hey. exactly. So if I know his visual, what is he looking at? But you can never think a man is thinking something good about you if you've not first appreciated yourself. Beautiful. So if you don't have a language that convinces you of your beauty, you're going to fill his language with your own self-defeating language. Mm. And that keeps you in your head. Mm. Um, We've also been raised to just perform, be servants and give, 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 give. You know, so in our minds, we just need to perform, make him happy, do this for him, give him tea, make him sit here, clean his shoes. Oh my God, have you... Have you given him a massage? Like the cause standards for making a man happy are just way too hard for us to be able to meet. And yet there's little language to the men about how to make a woman happy. Yes. I mean, they believe if he works hard and he brings money, that's it. Is that money going to give me an orgasm? No. No, let's be honest. I hear women who say for me, as long as I would rather cry in a Benz, there's no orgasm in a Benz. On oh, Range Rover. <laughs> there's nothing. You touch yourself all the time. Whether you like it or not. Mm. Yes. You know, so there's the, the messaging, the standards for do, do, do performance mm. uh, makes women go into a sexual encounter to perform, not to experience. So that keeps in your head because when you're performing, you're, you're considering outcomes. You know, you're managing outcomes, you're yes. controlling them. You're thinking, I start now, I finish now. Um, I will go into this position, I go into this. You're not fluid. Get lost. 
you, you're not able to get lost. Mm. You know, you're still in your space. You can hear mosquitoes buzzing by. You <laughs> see the the, ch- the changing lights. You can literally, you're making love, but you can still see the carpet is gray. Yes. You're still present, mm-hmm. you're not lost, you know. So that's one of the things. Then the limiting beliefs, then the body image issues, um, then the, the, the fact that we, when we are scared of something, we would rather please it than be able to be confident enough wow. to ask for what we want. That's so powerful. Yeah. When Women, we are scared of something. We, 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 we our rather, nervous system goes into pleasing. Rather than asking. Yes, rather than asking. So we don't, we, we fear. People tremble when they need to say, I need this. Mm. I want this. You know, that sounds so easy. Tell a man what you need. Sounds easy, but it's not. People freeze. They can't. Simply, that's why the, we have the language of, but he needs to figure out what I want. But I'm a woman. He needs to know how to treat a woman. No, you're not every woman. And even when you're every woman, you have different cycles, you have different phases, your life changes. There's a moment when you want a different kind of sex. There's a moment when you want a different kind of style. There's a moment when you'd want it somewhere else. There's a, you know, even as a your woman, you have different needs, different times, mm-hmm. you know. So you can't say, I'm a woman, he needs to figure me out. You are a woman with a mouth, mm-hmm. with needs, with desires and wants that need to be expressed. Talk. You need to talk, but we get frozen. The pleasing creates freeze on the inside, so we're not able to speak. Yes. Instead, we will just be there. Take me, do what you want to me. Ukimaliza, just cover me. Hey, you know, you do that. Yeah, I mean, you've had mm. me. I just give when it's done, it's done, mm. as opposed to I come first, you know. Yeah, yeah. so those, those are some mm. of the things that keep women in their heads, as in opposed their heads, to, yeah. yeah. Thank you for even, you know, dwell, going deeper on that. But you spoke about sexual uh, boundaries. Yeah. As a woman, when you don't feel like having sex yeah. first, yeah. is sex a whole, you know, a whole month affair? Uh, there are days you'll feel like, as a woman, I, I want sex, I don't want sex. And then what happens when you, you want when you you don't want it but he wants it can you explore uh, you see Doreen, can you explore <laughs> other ways of pleasing each other or each other yeah. or if i don't want let's just pick it up tomorrow that's why i love the pleasure movement uh on wellness together my company is called wellness together yes uh wellness together we're about pleasure you know uh when we've learned a lot about pleasure we'll realize sex is not the only pleasurable thing we can have together okay physical sex especially so yes you're talking about days when you want how many can how many days do you want and all that i think the how many days how many times the conversation two people need to have with each other um how many days and how my body feels women i always say women have a duality all the time i want i don't want you need to be able to understand that i may Mm. want i may not want if men don't understand that bit they will be lost so there's that duality but also there's cycles you have a cycle and your libido um, elevates along the cycle Mm. differently Mm -hmm. right Mm. um so speaking is being able to say today if i don't feel like penetrative sex what do i feel like do I feel like touch? Do I feel like conversation? Do I feel like play? Do I feel like a massage? Do I feel like uh, a good meal with my partner? Do I feel so many things that bring us pleasure as opposed to just penetration? But if we don't accept these things, if we don't value these other things, then we're always going to constantly say, I'm not having sex. Yes. There's no sex in this relationship. Many times, Lynn, when people are yearning for sex, there's a deeper yearning other than penetrative sex so because in through sex they've been able to get some of these things they don't realize sometimes you want sex because you want to feel uh, validated through sex is going to tell you all these things about you sometimes you want sex because you're yearning to feel important uh, or you want you're yearning for recognition so if you're telling you're the king you are the best you know he's probably yearning for recognition through sex mm-hmm. i can give that recognition away from sex yeah that's deep I can get validation away from sex. Yes. Is that now where we draw the line between sex and intimacy? Yes. Because I feel like many people feel like as long as we penetrate. That is it. We have yes. intimacy and we have sex yes. and we have sensuality mm-hmm. and we have pleasure. Mm. That is, that's where we draw the line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if a woman um, is to draw boundaries around her sex, it's for her to feel and understand um, if I may have penetrative sex, but I don't feel like it. What do I feel like? How can I be uh, pleasurable around my partner, you know, and expounding on all those rituals that you can do together so that should one thing not be working, another thing can work. Mm. 
you know mm -hmm. just because i'm rolling doesn't mean i can't pleasure my partner but i may not have the energy for it maybe or maybe i'm cramping or maybe maybe that's when i'll call for nurturance maybe that's when now i will ask I, I i will appreciate it if you soothe me if you give me massage if when i'm rolling because i have a uh, terrible men says um you run a bath for me yeah. you know you ask as opposed to but i'm rolling i'm in pain and you're not even able to sit in pain with somebody else mm. hmm where people run bath water run baths and just can't also in touch and massage yeah that's also intimacy that's also intimacy mm. yeah Let's talk about the rolling period yes. because I feel like <laughs> <laughs> it's very important yeah. because we, we are all going to roll mm. one way or another. Yeah. So if you're sleeping in bed yeah. and maybe you, you are rolling and then now your partner sleeps, oh God, yeah. that's now the time him he sleeps yeah. that like different direction, you yeah. know, like there's no touch. What does that do to someone? Um, you're rolling, you're mm. new menses. Mm. And then your partner is distant. Yes. So how do you feel when your new man says the question? Have you discussed how you want to be nurtured mm -hmm. or nourished when your new man says? Because mm -hmm. chances are your new man says and you're horny. Very. But you've given the body language of this is a sacred thing. I don't like you in this space. Yes. We have period shaming that makes us have this language of when I'm rolling, keep away. Don't come near so me. So he's read that signal, yet internally you're horny. Mm. You're giving mixed signals. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You need to also say, by the way, I know I used to tell you that when I'm rolling, I need space. Literally, I don't need space. Kuja. Shika. Come. Touch my. <laughs> touch my. <tears. laughs> I need you. <laughs> In fact, I need you more right now. Mm -hmm. You know, you're allowed to change your mind. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. When is a woman more sexually active? I had a conversation. Yes. Earlier on, as yeah. I was telling you, mm. with Jacob, and he said women need to observe the, the, the sexual power fades at mm. some point. Mm. You know, yeah. is there is there such a thing? Yes. Um, ideally, it's around ovulation mm -hmm. when a woman is ovulating. Mm -mm. Um, no. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh, age. Age. Yes. yes the forties. That's when it's the best. That's when sex is the best. In hey, the 40s. can we all get to our forties? <laughs> You want to get there quick, but you know? But it's not ideally the 40s. Yes. It's what happens to a woman by the time she's 40. Because some women don't become that woman at 40. Because I am getting women at 40 with a lot of hormonal imbalances. Their libido went out of the window at 35. Um, they have they have body issues. They are putting on weight in parts that they are not desiring. So they, they hate their bodies. Mm. They smell food. They put on weight. They're having hot flashes already at 40. Uh, they forgot about their vagina. They really don't care about it so they're depending on how you took care of yourself so ideally based on a woman's energetics i call them archetypes yes um a woman at 40 is four women in one you know uh four women in one she has a fire of four women you know she she desires and she hungers and she wants more and her body is at full bloom you know by the time she's 40 but if she abused her body she took it she took lots of processed foods she didn't take care of her hormones um she did not she took care she took a lot of toxins she worked too hard and slept less um she did not take care of her mental health she's going to be chaotic and a mess at 40 so that one early menopause will even come for mm. her right so ideally that one doesn't understand what i'm talking about but a woman who starts nurturing herself at 30 eating right according to her body and her cycle, balancing her hormones according to her as a woman, a woman who starts taking care of her mental health, a woman who starts relating with her emotions from 30, a woman who starts doing deeper work, understanding her attachment styles, her relational palette, how she learned about love and feelings and, and mm. how she connects with other people. Mm -hmm. By the time she's 40, she has mastered herself. And self-mastery, puts out a whole being like she's whole by 40 mm. and when you're whole you are just a pleasurable thing so she experiences deep sex she has more confidence in herself she's more self-assured she loves herself more she's learned about self-compassion yes. um she literally calls in her desires yes. she's not waiting for somebody to come and fix her she's busy fixing herself that woman is already having sex before she has sex. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Ah, yes. Because, okay, I won't comment on myself. Yeah. Just <laughs> run a whole page about me. 
tell us about you. No, I just feel like the more I grow, yeah. the more it's crazy. Like the more, the more you want. Yes. And you know, then they say, oh, you know, we're looking for the younger girls. Let them go look for the younger girls. They don't know what they're missing. By all means. What I had at 40, I can't compare to what I'm having. Rather, 24. 20. You can't compare to what you're having right now. Yes. Even what I had at 28 was confused. It was, will I be wanted? Will I be taken? Will he marry me? Will I be able to have children? I had a lot of, am I, am I good enough? Right now, I am so sure of what I can, mm -hmm. what I can give, and I'm comfortable with what I cannot give. Okay. You know? Let's, let's talk about fantasies and other things. Yeah. Is it okay to have fantasies? Yeah. And to what length can you go? <laughs> <laughs> or are some things just meant to stay in your head, you know? <laughs> A good one. <laughs> oh, so are some things just supposed to crazy? Yeah, yeah, you know. That probably it's not even written about yet. Yes, yeah, you know. So some... what's your wildest fantasy like? Hey, uh, we're Doreen. <laughs> Tell us. Hey, you're not doing me Tell like us. that. Hey, Doreen. What's that... your wildest ah, fantasy? Ah, the one will run a whole blog on me for <laughs> things out of context. <laughs> I'll tell you on the side. Oh, okay. No, I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah, no, 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 for, not for you mm. because I don't want anyone to take it out of context. It, you know, yeah. Lin Gugi said being hanged upside down <laughs> is <laughs> is her wildest fantasy you know you get it yeah but yeah. we have fantasies mm. i would be lying if i said i don't have yeah. i have fantasies you mm. know and some of them i ask should they just stay here in the head <laughs> is god looking at me like uh, <laughs> no that's from the devil you know i'm just like yeah, yeah. you know i even know even you who you scholar you have huh? <laughs> <laughs> i'm looking for company yeah, no because i know we all have fantasies fantasies you know yes. so uh, I found, how do we go about them Our and fantasies. So, uh, yeah. are you seeing how excited you are very <laughs> <laughs> so why bury something like that mm. why do you know you would be numb you would at 40 you're the one who's going to be walking around with a, an angry vagina hey. if you bury your <laughs> Yes, angry vagina is your mad at people who didn't mm. cause you that pain. You are screaming at people who are not failing to listen to you. Yani, you want to be hard, but you 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 are just forcing, you know, mm. you're putting it out there. Mm. You're screaming in traffic and all those things. We can't bury them. Yes. At the very least, we need to give them expression. Wow. I want to believe that when I'm in an intimate relationship, that is my vulnerable space yes. to be able to explore and express yes. myself. And it does not mean you're supposed to be the vessel for all my fantasies. But at least I want to be, I want you to be the one who mentally can hear me. Mm. You know, we start from there. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with having urges and fantasies. You've been the vessel of mm. my fantasies. Mm. So does that mean your fantasies yeah. can include someone apart from your person? It, you know, now it's consent. Because yes. your fantasies, one, what I'm trying to say is that I could, I could say I want you to whack me. I want you to spank me. Yes. And I want you to burn me. What if it's not something that comes easy with me? What if I have trauma about being, being banged, banged or being whacked that I cannot watch somebody mm -hmm. go through pain? What if it terrorizes me mm. as opposed to bringing me pleasure? So yes. it brings you pleasure, but it doesn't bring me pleasure. So you can't ask me to be the one to yeah. do that. Oh, I could tell you, um, I, I, need to, I need to heal my pain around that before you know before, before i can be able to because yes. for me it feels like i am hurting you i'm not giving you pleasure for people who are in a relationship yeah. and you know there's ho this whole thing of unfaithfulness mm. me i'm loyal to my partner mm. of course i can have fantasies but a stay outside there mm. right for people who are in a relationship or people who treasure what they have going on mm. but your fantasy involves another person or what your partner cannot do right yeah. how do you handle that again depending on the relationship you're in so you're in a monogamous relationship yes exclusive relationship yes it means anything to do with your physical intimacy is with me mm. so if we have agreed like that unless you're in an open relationship so mm. that types of relationships oh yes you know so i may discuss that i fantasize a threesome I, I just feel like I want to explore that. Mm. So I can discuss that with you. But based on our relationship status, it may not be explorable. Yes. 
But what I like is that you can talk about it. So there are some fantasies that might be limiting, which mm. is why lean, in as much as some of them come later, but these fantasies are beautiful things to explore when before we get married, mm. to talk about, to really understand does my personality, is, is my sex personality yes. hinged on me having a threesome? Because having sex with one person is not enough for me. I want to explore my mind around mm -hmm. having two people at the same time. Mm -hmm. Two people, you know, stimulate my body. So if I, before I say yes to somebody, am I saying yes to having sex with one person? Or am I saying yes that we can explore our different fantasies okay. given the way we have learned them because mm. that's a very important question you may have um, fantasies that require other people to come and perform them some of the fantasies you may have your partner may not be capable he, of doing he that. may not know how to pin you up he may not know how to mm. to know to you, you may learn with each other mm -hmm. but he may actually not know and it might take him time to explore getting there and in the meantime you're probably losing your patience yeah. so i think Exploring fantasies and urges requires first communication mm -hmm. and then accepting what you're going to try out. The communication and the idea that you want to listen. Okay. Then exploring what you want to try out, mm. right, right together. And then being open to be each other's boundaries and consent. Just because you want it doesn't mean I'll do it. You may want anal sex and I don't want anal sex. Mm. You may want pleasure, uh, rather pain and pleasure. And I, I don't, don't want, want pain. That. You know, um, but I'm open to trying. Maybe a little bit of pain. Maybe mm. start slowly. Maybe pinch me a bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe nibble at mm -hmm. me a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, it could be maybe pull my one strand, not yes. twenty strands at yes. the same time. Don't you pull know? my hair. You know. Uh, no, you could start. Yes. Yeah. You. I. I will want to explore it, mm. but you have to start slowly and be somewhere. patient and build on it and build, and build on, on it. it and allow me to reach somewhere and say, actually, it's starting to feel good. Mm. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, touch, because women, we have different things going on, you know. We are well endowed. We have this, we have that, we have this. But men have one. Mm. Or they have many. What do you mean? Like, for things example, in, yes, things mm. to touch. Um, are they, yeah. The same episode where you got me, I mm. explore so much about that, yes. about touch, touch hunger. Mm. And um, some of those episodes have not been released, so mm -hmm. I would want that I can okay. share that I with your audience that. when it's that. out. Yes. Um, but no, touch is for all of us. Mm -hmm. It's just um, uh, how we explore connection or intimacy uh, when it comes to touch. Touch regulates. Mm. Um, so it regulates all of us. Mm -hmm. When we don't touch enough, we, we, we have more anxiety. We are more irritable in the house. So in as much as we have more parts to touch, in as much as women um, relate more with touch yes. emotionally, men to need touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Women need it more, but men need touch as well. And they have they have a body to touch. Mm. No, it's not like your body is the only one that has texture. Uh, you know, valleys and shells and legs and, and, and yes, and it, those valleys <laughs> are for the pleasure of his eye. Okay, you know, yeah. um, yes, they also for the pleasure of his touching. Mm -hmm. But he also has things to touch. What do you mean? He has butt cheeks. He has uh, you holes. You can touch a man's like butt cheeks. Oh yes, it's a thing. It's a thing. You can <laughs> nibble the butt cheeks. You can touch the butt cheeks. <laughs> 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 yes. You know, you fondle them like you were touching Ungaya Chapat. <laughs> <laughs> like, lie there, let me. You know, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. Yes. All the parts of their bodies need to feel your touch. Mm. Yeah. Because they also have, you know, nerves that need to be stimulated. Yes. And once there's stimulation in any part of the body, it mm -hmm. sends signals, you know, yeah. more signals. Yeah. Um, just one thing that women need to know, just because a man is erect doesn't mean he's ready. Wait, what? Really? Erect in layman's language is if he's hard. Doesn't mean he's ready. What does that mean? <laughs> Please communicate. <laughs> So, mm. if a man does not get touched, he doesn't have enough blood flow to the penis that allows him, one, to have a proper erection for you or to even sustain a longer orgasm inside you. So, um, a poor starting game is how it ends poorly, mm. right? Um, so, because women are focused on being touched, 
Yes. They forget that the man also needs to be touched. I know the challenge women get is that men are unresponsive. Yes. They touch. Yes. You know, you're touching like you're touching a log. Mm. They do See, not... that's what I was saying. <laughs> As we have different... <laughs> now also, you, you but just... also you know how to communicate. You know, the way your body moves. That's the mine, moons, right? The I touch more there. You know, don't uh, move. Doreen, but for them, see, they don't. Yeah, because yeah. for them... Kuma is uh, feeling nice, but you're touching like, does he like it? Yes. Yeah, does he, is he enjoying... Then Even you're what tomorrow is there to touch? Tomorrow it tells you... Yesterday, baby, you touch me, regulated me. Uh -huh. I regulated. Why don't you say? In the moment, you are not giving me signals. Yes. Who are communicators. Good. But they need it. Yes. <laughs> no, that's what I meant. You know, because you'll be like, and then later on, someone will say, man, that was amazing. You're like, what do you mean? <laughs> Why did you not say it? <laughs> Why did you not think that time? You go ago? feeling like you're such a poor performer. Mm. Kumbe, the guy doesn't Kumbe, have your the... game was tops. You I know, know then right? I'm telling you nine years <laughs> later. I'm like, no, unfair, poor communication. Poor communication. Communicate, mm. talk. Yeah. Say that's nice. Mm. Do that again. Exactly. You know? Hey. Don't make me be a sexologist here, guys. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> you know? But well, let's talk about squatting though, because yeah. there's it's always like if a woman can squat, mm. that one she's game on. Okay. You know, and I feel like it makes women who can't squat feel like they have zero game. Yeah. First, what are some of the what are some of the the stereotypes around squatting? Yeah. And is it true that when you squat, mm. it has gone? It's it's <laughs> ask me other questions. <laughs> Let me hear them. Gone where? It has reached Muko. It has reached Like Muko, it's only like, as good as when it spreads yeah. or when it like goes that's up there. Sasa, io, sasa. Yeah. That's climax that's, of climax. Should be two jerry cans. Yes. Otherwise, you've done nothing. Yes. <laughs> you know? Tell me more. No, that's what I want you to talk, talk to us about squatting. You know? <laughs> You know, and um, how do you separate squat and urine? <laughs> Guy, ah, okay. <laughs> I needed Samia. to write the no. question. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm asking for them questions. They, yes, they I know they want to ask in their yeah. head, but it can't come. Yeah. But you've told me express, you know. Mm. So I'm just helping my people. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I get those conversations, mm. those questions as well, you know, yeah. Desha. In fact, they don't want to talk about anything else. Uh -huh. Squatting, you know, then they have booklets and all that. Yes. Um, <laughs> I won't deny the squatting orgasm feels pleasurable. Yeah. Amazing. Um, my first time experiencing it personally, I, I remember um, squatting and feeling like I'm a full woman. Yes. Like that's what I, I remember the statement. I'm a full woman. Redemption. But I th thinking now, I must have felt like that because I had been conditioned to believe that's what brings pleasure. That's what makes a woman look like. You know, that's what makes, you know, you be be considered a full woman, you know? And so that's, that's, that's you know, because cause, cause, um, the language you attach mm. to how you feel is important. It shapes, you know, what else you're going to yes. ask for. So if I say, this makes me feel like a full woman, that's where I've attached my sense of importance yes. sexually. Right? Good. So to just put it out there, and I try, but even as I've tried lean, people are not going to listen. Mm -hmm. But let me try one more time. Yes. Um, there are different ways of experiencing pleasure. You own them. Your brain will play tricks on you. It will tell you because Doreen said squatting is pleasurable. If I don't get it, I'm not having sex and you're going to be messed. So you're going to, when I say own your pleasure, you need to learn to feel. Yeah. You really need to learn to feel and explore. One of the things <clears throat> that I got from my therapy that I explored even as I did sexology <laughs> in the classes is learning to feel. And you learn to feel by first owning your sensual sovereignty. You have to first fall in love with your body. Yes. Take care of your body. Feel, journal how you feel, how you feel when you're eating, how you feel when you are inhaling the essential oils from that candle, how you feel when you touch your boobs, how you feel when you feel your ears, mm -hmm. when you're oiling your body, you start journaling because we're never taught to feel. Feeling is not something we know how to do. That's why we also don't know how to sit with intimacy. When we don't know how to feel love, it's just an outside thing, but yeah. we don't know how to feel it. Yes. You know, we grew up in survival states 
and in fear we know how to feel fear more than we know how to feel love yeah. so learning to feel is such a very important aspect so learning to feel is getting to touch yourself so that you can explore what does that make me feel like yeah. right because now people who masturbate are mastering how they feel when they touch their clitoris by themselves without the pressure of be like this because you see when somebody else is coming to make you feel you there's also the anxiety yes. of am i good enough am yes. i but now when you're touching yourself there's no expectations yeah. there's no other one observing so you're able to really feel the depth of something and i'm mm. not encouraging that people should have sex by themselves but really masturbation teaches you to feel your body mm -hmm. through that you're able to feel really what's pleasurable yeah. and you call out because when you can feel this feels good if i touch my nipples and they feel good i know when he touches me to feel better better so when he comes i want to explore longer touch. touch i'm going to play i'm going to find oils i'm going to put some some chocolate and make sure that he stays there longer so i can feel more and and awaken sensations which were buried and dead because if we don't touch ourselves our skin cells are not producing sensation mm right when we don't stimulate there's no sensation yeah. and so the longer he touches the more sensations i'm able to develop mm. and the more capacity to feel yes. so i get to knock that in i feel good when my boobs are touched in fact i'm okay when my boobs are touched the whole movie time without penetration mm. and then i explore the next part and the next part and the next part so that's taking mindfulness you know i, I love teach that. people coming back into their bodies so mindfulness allows you to first go into your body and you feel when you start feeling you're able to say really for me this feels good this feels good this feels better but also this feels better these times because there are times when you like if i'm ovulating my nipple orgasm will be much better than yes. anything else but when i'm about when i'm on my luteal phase my cervical orgasm will be the heavenly one yeah. right um when i am on my periods i actually have more sensation around my clitoris yes. so my clitoral orgasm might light me that is the best mm. but without exploration i'm going to continue thinking what lynn said is the best mm. kind of orgasm what is the best mindfulness mindfulness and feeling learning to feel and owning what you feel and saying i really don't feel good when you lick my nipples like that i would prefer you use a feather to stroke them and just lean and find some space and take longer mm. don't rush that part that's where i feel more pleasure yeah and also understanding orgasms can be different orgasms are different because there are seven points on your body you can orgasm from therefore you choose if you orgasmed in any of those places you're choosing to say i orgasmed i came you know so that's one thing now this is for when i came to kenya there was a the whole buzz of squatting but then there's women who have had their clitoris you know messed yeah, up with yeah, yeah. so that woman even doesn't feel shy when a man goes around that part so what are you telling that woman she's not having sex mm -hmm. she actually could be enjoying the best sex mm. having multiple vaginal orgasms if you open her up so when i get them i take a longer time opening them up because i'm trying to tell them this is not the only place they took that away they didn't take away your treasures they thought they took away something but they left you with multiple treasures mm -hmm. let's discover the others mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and let go of the fact that you can only experience an orgasm from one part so squatting is but one of the orgasmic experiences mm -hmm. a woman can yeah. experience yeah. not the only one not the only one not the only one beautiful one so we can't go into exploring it but it's not the only one mm. we need to take ourselves away from that limitation it limits us from owning the other pleasurable spaces and also discovering and delving deeper into them mm. okay yes. so that being said squatting is beautiful it is one of the orgasms just like we would teach you how to um have uh, maybe a deep throat we get to teach you how to have a squatting orgasm how we can teach you how to have cervical orgasms we can also teach you how to have a squatting orgasm mm. so that's there that being put there um it is also not something that someone brings to you it is something that you learn to experience using your body 
because most of the times I find women are waiting for, you know, my man doesn't know how to touch me. He doesn't make me squat. He could be touching, but he's touching a woman who has hormonal imbalances. Right? You have hormonal imbalances, and so you're numb in certain parts of mm. you. So if there's numbing, you, you could be touching a woman who has sexual trauma she's not talking about. So there's cringing as opposed to openness. So if there's been cringing, there's rigidity in that mm. part. Is it on the man? No. Um, he, a man could be doing a good job, but there's a woman who is stuck in her brain, perfectionists. Perfectionists have a hard time being vulnerable. Oh, we have those two. Yeah. They stem in their heads. Squatting requires surrender, vulnerability. You have to free the brain so the brain can free the yes. fluid parts of the body to mm. produce fluids. You know, every woman is fluid. But if you are stuck up or stuck in your mind, the mind is going to explore keeping you safe as opposed to letting you, letting go. you go. Get lost. Get lost yourself, child. You're safe. You know, it wants you, the one who is supposed to create mindfulness so that you can be able to say we are safe, we yes. are fine, uh, we are safe in this space. Mm. You know, everything else is good. So it'll, when the brain frees you, then also your fluid parts are opened up. Mm. When your fluid parts are opened up, there's not much ado. You know, you are that. So if you stay more in your body, uh, that's going to be a problem because mm. you're going to be dry. You'll be pushing. You know, you can actually squat. It's a feeling, but you may not release fluids. There's some women who squat and they don't release fluids. No way. Yes. Hmm? When you explore squatting and you feel it, you can understand the feeling and you can also understand that the fluid part. You can feel when the orgasmic part moment is happening. Mm. And you may not release fluids. So many times you can squat and you find you actually released like a drop. Yes. But in the experience the of which you feel the magical. feeling was, yes, Beautiful. you know, it's as if there was a lot of fluids that yeah. you released. Uh, yeah, so there's two things. You oh. you may squat and you may not release. Oh, also you. Oh, that, that's because some people might then measure yeah. their level of, of squatting satisfaction based, based, based on, on the fluids, how much no. they've released. No, hey, it's the idea that you hit climax. Sorry, sorry, it's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the idea that you hit climax. Yeah, yeah. Ah, beautiful. All right. When people come to you, what? Are, oh, you teach them all these things. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> let's go <laughs> let's go let's go yeah mm -hmm. i teach women how to eat yes. balance their hormones so that they can be able to be more fluid food is also a huge part it is a major part because you know your sex organs mm. are influenced by your you have you have hormonal glands your hormonal glands um, affect or influence your 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 libido, mm. your you know your your wow. sexuality. They also affect your fluidity. So if certain hormones are out of balance, if your testosterone levels are out of balance, your libido levels will be affected. Mm. If your libido is affected, your desire for squatting you know will not be easy. If your estrogen levels are affected, fluidity is going to be affected. So you'll be dry and you will have the sensation of squatting, but you will not release the fluids because yeah. now the fluids are erotic. Yeah. They, you know the sounds and mm -hmm. you know the play yes. Yes. so it be, they become so it's not something you're enjoying alone it becomes something that is going to enjoy as well okay. because of the splashing mm. and the sounds mm. and you know the touch and everything yeah. else yes yeah, so i teach women how to um, eat for their sexuality um, balance their hormones mm. take care of their emotions um, heal emotional blocks and sexual blocks to yes. to squatting and to pleasure itself because we also have those ones yeah, yeah. Oh, we are glad we have you mm. god may god may god is good for bringing you <laughs> <laughs> it's my god, pleasure god is good for bringing you yeah. away, but i i know mm. i'm gonna have you back because i feel like just by on the comment section people will want to learn more and more mm. but i love that you also call what mm. you you call um your company wellness wellness together wellness together yeah. I even feel like we are together already. Yeah. I feel very, <laughs> yeah, we did I this together. Very, yes, yeah. I feel like very motivated to mm. learn, explore. In the beginning more. when I started, there was yeah. a lot for women to learn. It mm. was overwhelming. Um, and then as we know, if you've not been yes. conditioned to have certain habits, yes. it's so easy for you to 
to go back. Mm. You can come to Doreen and you say, I have this problem and this, and then Doreen tells you, go and take this, take yes. this, take this. But you know, you, you always default back to, you know, to the comfort zone. But when you are doing something with other women, you, you sort of like have accountability partners. Yes. You know, you have cheerleaders, you have people pushing, you have people seeing you. There's a way in which you're able mm. to, so we've been able to move further as women. I have a group called Sensuous Women Beautiful. as well. Uh, these women who chose to take their time and do the work wow. and take care of their, of their bodies, mm. take care of their emotions, take care of their pleasure, take care of their desires. And where we started, Lynn, is not where we are now. Yeah. By the time I meet, they met some of these ladies, some of them, their husbands would not even allow them to be away from home for a certain time. But they've learned how to communicate their needs. They've learned how to respect themselves that now they have their partners respect them. Yes. You know, they've learned how to to allow that I don't know this and I'm taking care of myself. And then when they took care of themselves, their husband saw results and they're okay with where they have mm -hmm. to go and all that. You know, I have seen women take um, sexual wellness and, um, and, and, and have sexual habits that they didn't have. Mm -hmm. So being able to work as a community is beautiful for women because we get to share our stories, beautiful. which are not out there, which are also not taken care of. Mm, yeah, Beautiful. Mm. God, mm. I, I can't wait to have you back. But before I let you go, though, and also probably if there are any de uh, contact details you can share with us, is there anything we've left out right now <laughs> that you think we should <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot uh -huh. uh, there's a lot to unpack mm. when it comes to sex sexuality yes. and sexual wellness um i feel like this is just a starter conversation this is just a starter yeah. conversation there's, you've tried to really yes. dig deep into me i've done the basics yeah you've done no you've yeah. also tried because yes. most <laughs> interviews i like to stay at the surface mm -hmm. but you you're very probing mm -hmm. <laughs> You can see how hard I go for you. Look at how hard I go for you. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I'm like, she's good. Tell she's, them I try. Yeah, yeah. you know, you've done a good mm -hmm. job. You've probed yeah. and, you, and, and you're always able to remember where you started and mm. where you want to go and what mm. the goal of the conversation is. Yeah. So I believe there's still so much more that we need to learn mm. to, to bridge the orgasm gap both women and men. There's a lot for us to learn about men. There's a lot for men to learn about, about women. women. Um, the more we get to learn about each other, the easier life is. We are complicating things. Um, this whole idea of you'll find it better elsewhere. It's not, if you're not better yet, you're still going to be a horrible person to a new person. Mm. Mm. Powerful. Yeah. Water. Water here. <laughs> water the grass here. Yes. Please water the grass yeah. here. Yeah. But you, can I just commend you one thing? You're so mm. easy to talk to. Oh, amazing. Like, can you imagine? You're just. <laughs> I, I was a bit hesitant at first because I was like, should I ask this? Should I not ask? You know. But you are so easy to talk to. You oh, know. Thank you. And I hope even the people who are watching when they come to you, please receive them with much love. I will. Because I won't lie. Mm. This conversation, maybe mm. from um from people who have been taught about it since they were younger mm. looks a bit easy yeah. but to be honest mm, yeah. I would be lying if I say there are women who are watching here and, mm. and they know everything some mm. of them are actually learning things for the very first time I believe you I'm also always learning mm. there's never I if every time every year there's always something new I'm learning yeah. you know we can never say we know it all yes this life is for is for living mm -hmm. We can't just, and for living well, we yeah. can't just live it. We need to live it well. So even those who think they know, being able to be curious why they are listening to you, why they watch you, mm. is because they want to learn something yeah. else. So I know all of us are always learning. Good. Do yeah. you enjoy doing this though? I do. I love it. I, I used to be a serious person, Lynn. I hope I'm not eating into your time. No, you are not. Um, I used to, I, I come from a background where I used to be a perfectionist. I used to be a leader. I used to be um, the one that carries the weight of the world on my shoulders and life was too serious for me. I used to feel like I, I am too serious. So my friends used to go play and they'd leave me out. You know, they go to the club or they plan pleasurable things and they don't tell me. They only tell me serious things like, let's go read a book, let's go do this and this. And I felt I, I don't want to live the rest of my life like that. So also I discovered that when I do sexology, it's how I play because sexology is vulnerability, it's playfulness, it's tapping into that sensuality part of me yeah. and using that to 
express myself. So mm. I find it makes my life easy. And yes, I do enjoy mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And you have a beautiful smile also. Oh, thank you. You, 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 you you're just so <laughs> naturally, you are, you are gorgeous. I love you for out and also here. And oh, I know people pay for these conversations, yeah. but you've had them with us yeah. free of charge yeah. we just requested and you came and you shared this knowledge with our audience yeah. so i really do appreciate that in celebration know? of women's day uh, i wanted to share myself with other oh. women with you and then women and it's been a pleasure meeting you as well you're doing an amazing job thank you i always watch and i'm like oh lynn wants to speak with me i'd love to have coffee with lynn so if this feels like coffee this is this, this um, more than coffee yes, yeah. this has been coffee <laughs> has been tea has <laughs> been you know dessert it's been everything so smoothies. i appreciate smoothies <laughs> i appreciate the challenge you've posted the challenge <laughs> when i have to admit I'm, I'm one of those people who don't pay much attention to food honestly mm. I have to admit, I'm mm. not someone who would be like, oh, let me know. Nah, that's like my weakness. Oh, mm. now that's why I'm I don't want to be friends it affecting with you. Me you teach me how to talk, mm -hmm. how to <laughs> to look for stories that impact people. You are people. so natural. You don't even need to look. <laughs> They'll be coming to you right now. Okay, even. but you have a way of finding stories that are very uh -huh. impactful. You have a way of using stories to encourage other people, to make other people feel like you're not alone. Thank um, you. That's the beauty of what you do. And, 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 and I didn't find the right one that's a gift yes yeah so you will yes. teach me that i teach you how to take care of your body i love women who take care of their bodies yes. because we have we are cyclic women we have hormones at play and we want we don't want to grow old too fast you if i ask you how do you want to feel or look like when you're 50 if how you want to look like and feel like is not being worked on now then you'll be self-abandoning yourself. Mm. Yeah. That profound. Mm. I appreciate that, thank you know. You. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, Where can people find you? Because now I know. Um, Lynn, <laughs> contacts. Please, <laughs> Lynn. We want to go there. Yes, my number is 0719 Yes. Uh, they can also check me out on Instagram, mm -hmm. Wellness Together. Okay. I spend most of my time on Instagram. All I right. would say TikTok, yes. blah, 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 blah. Instagram. Most can find me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Any yeah. email? Maybe for the people. Yes. Okay. Uh, Wellness together mm -hmm. 28 at gmail.com. Okay, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Guys, let's go. You see, I'm starting by myself. <laughs> I'd be so happy and, to have them. Yeah, yeah. Even Scholar is like... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm taking the delegation yeah, from here. Yes. But we yeah, can also start from you know, here. We can so also start space. from here. Yeah. You, we, yeah, we can start from here. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> I said, yeah, there's no shame to this. No, no, there's none. If, I, if there was shame, God would not give this no, to no. us. Yeah. You know, it's actually a hidden it. treasure. It is a hidden treasure. Take wisdom to find it. To find it. You know, <laughs> and at least now we have the path find. Yes, and the We have someone who is about to. I'm happy for that. Yeah, but I can't wait honestly to also explore this for myself um, like I'm, truthfully i, I can't, can't wait i can't wait to yes. take you through yes. any area of you i know you're good in some areas mm. i'm good in some areas i'm not good in some areas yeah, i know you're too. good in some areas not good in some areas yes exactly yes. so we share knowledge yeah. so we can be able to build each other mm -hmm. you know up to something else. I'm, ha I'm, I'm happy to receive you mm. and yeah. it's been you know i've always wanted to have this conversation but for some reason i could not find the right person to oh, have yeah? this conversation <laughs> so i thank god for bringing you you amazing. my way yeah. it's been amazing, amazing. guys i want to know what hey, questions the people at the back you were so loud when we started oh all your questions are muga you're good yeah. you're very good yeah. all right so guys <laughs> even you at Dama, home, is Dama are you good <laughs> Dama is <laughs> edwin are you sure you're good you're not lost, okay? Ah, yeah. mm. Guys, honestly, honestly, mm. I really want to know your feedback from the comment section. This is a journey we are taking together. I said we are not just going to rebuild. You know, sometimes it's easy to rebuild things that have nothing to do with us. Things that won't take in a work. It's so easy to rebuild that, you know. It's easy to rebuild and say, I, I want my hair to look a certain way. Like, But when it has something to do with you and you got to put in a work, I know I've tried before. That thing is hard. And I want when we are rebuilding in 24, 
2024 we rebuild in all sectors we are rebuilding financially sexually emotionally spiritually i really want us to do this full circle so for me finding someone like doreen who was able to just have this conversation with us and make it fun really makes me feel nice i feel like she has given us a lot of herself and for me i honestly can't thank her enough but i know there are those you know extensive questions that you guys have you want to sign up she's not asked me to do this guys this is not a paid commercial her contact details are on the screen her email and social media handle go find her i just want this happiness for all of us especially women i want this happiness for all of us so go find her her contact details are on the screen to memaliza he show I'm going to see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m. But I can't leave without saying thank you to our amazing partners at Kings Developers Limited for always coming through. Just a reminder, guys, uh, they have very beautiful, beautiful apartments across the nation. And I keep saying, yes, you can get something for 30 million, but you can also get something for as low as 4 million. They have affordable, medium range, upper end. Uh, walk to their offices at Prism Tower, fifth floor, and tell them, Kings, what's up, Lindsay? centers show us what you have and also talk to them about their flexible payment plan pole pole sawa sawa yeah cheni ni kunywe juice and then of course to say thank you to our amazing people at maridadi motors ashukran for always coming through and guys go import yourself a beautiful car also very flexible payment plans huh? when it comes to importing your dream car save with them in the investment circle you can check more details on their website go get your car cleaned up your duvets your carpets at sparkling and for those who want to enroll their kids or enroll themselves or even a loved one to a driving school my daddy driving school is right there Thank you guys for being amazing. I'm going to see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Bye.